Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out for this morning's last lecture. I know this, the promise of spring is in the forecast, but not here yet, so thanks for making your way over. Um, it's our pleasure this morning, and it's my pleasure, to welcome for our last lecture a man of great stature. <laughs> I know. Thank you. For him, not for the line. But anyway, I don't just mean that Todd was captain of the St. Norbert basketball team in its 76-77 season, nor am I just referring to the fact that for one or more summers during college, when his job was painting at St. Norbert, he was assigned all the ceiling work. <laughs> I actually am referring to the stature that really counts. The stature of a person returning to work at a place that has been home for him his whole life. The stature of a man who has lent his development skills to important community organizations and agencies such as Journey House in Milwaukee or Rawhide Boys Ranch and of course our own wonderful institution. And the stature of a person who leads by example, who listens with humble attentiveness to the stories and the wisdom of others and who helps our institution celebrate the goodness that we support as expressed in the lives of our alums. Will you please help me welcome our Director of Alumni and Parent Relations, Mr. Todd Damon. Thank you, Julie. Um, I usually do the tall jokes, but I appreciate you stepping in for me. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, my topic today is storytelling. It's, um, I'm not going to talk about storytelling. I'm, I'm going to tell stories. But I mean, storytelling has been as, around as long as we have. You know what I mean? There's been many great societies that did not use the wheel, but there's never been a society that haven't told stories. And it's a, it's a way of uh, explaining our experiences and sharing knowledge. So, although my stories don't typically involve knowledge. <laughs> but that said, let's, let's get started here. Maybe let's go the right way here. Yeah, 1955. That's me. I'm, I'm probably a day old. <laughs> you know? My mother used to celebrate my birthday on February 19th and 20th. So... But 1955, in 1955, uh, here on campus, uh, was the uh, dedication and opening of two, two buildings, one being Sensenbrenner Memorial Hall, uh, the second of the resident halls, and the other would be the uh, Hall of Fine Arts, and Pennings Hall of Fine Arts were, were both opened in the fall of 55. And you know, that's where I really got my Norbertine start. I was baptized here at Old St. Joseph's Church by uh, Father Blaise Peters, a, a Norbertine. Now, Pennings, uh, Abbot Pennings would have still been alive. Uh, um, several of you know this, but Pennings passed uh, March 17, 1955. So I suspect he probably blessed me, uh, knowing that my father would have brought me to him. Um, I, and so, you know, I feel very... Uh, proud of that, uh, not having been able to document that, but I'm, I'm going with that. <laughs> and that's the other thing about my storytelling. My maternal grandfather, Buck Jansen, old Buck, he, oh yes, there's a lot, that, there's, I've invited some of my uh, friends here today, or, or some of our Golden Knights, and they remember old Buck who ran the, a tavern in a fish fry place on the corner of Reed and Forth in the uh, late 50s, 60s, and into the early 70s. And the one thing I remember really from Grandpa, is when, uh, who was a great storyteller, is uh, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> so keep that in mind today. <laughs> okay. This would have been uh, a First Communion photo. I'm, are you able to see behind me here? Because I'm you don't want to sit behind me in a movie theater, and I just want to make sure you can see it. This, I'm with my mother and father right there. This is probably 1963, and I'm showing this uh, photo because I'm about to talk about my dad here for a while. As many of you here, if you've been longtime residents or have had 
kids that have played out at the uh, Little League Park here in town. It's named after my dad. Um, this is Kelly. He went to St. Norbert High School. He went to St. Joseph's grade school here on campus, the old, the old building that was just recently uh, torn down. He would have been the class of 43. At St. Norbert, he was the class of uh, St. Norbert High School, the class of 47. For those of you that don't know, St. Norbert High School was housed in Boyle Hall. It was a boarding school, but there were quite a few day students, and certainly my father would have been one. He lived on Stewart Street, which is just be, um, the, the family home was in the parking lot of uh, behind Sholis. That's him on the end, number 24. Uh, this is just half the team here. Uh, that St. Norbert High School team won their first 22 games that year. Then they lost to St. Patrick's in the Catholic tournament, which was played at Van Dyke Gym. But they won 22 straight games in a row. And um, that's something that links me to my father because there's only one other St. Norbert High School, or which later became Abbott Pettings High School, basketball team that won 22 straight games. And that was the team that I played on my senior year. And um, you know, so it, it links the two of us. He was also a member of the student council of, uh, and served as class president of the uh, student council in, in 1946-47. That's him down here and right up here. And he was, he was a great guy, a great man. Matter of fact, between his junior and senior year in high school, he made a commitment to join the order. And uh, I remember when I was a little kid, I always thought it was the Norbertine order that, that he joined. And somehow he got away from the Norbertines, and I'm not certain how that <coughs> occurred. But the, he, he joined another order. Uh, the seminary was in Kirkwood, Missouri. So the, the deal is, as a, you know, the, this, this order told him, well, you got to stop dating because he had a girlfriend. <laughs> little uh, Joni Jansen, of course, you know, uh, who lived over on 4th Street. She went to Nicolet High School, which is the pack right now. Uh, but so, so he broke her heart. You know, uh, and you can just imagine that for you, those of you that dated in high school, what that might have been like, where uh, he made this commitment to, to become a priest. So upon graduation, he was off to the, to the seminary. And he was there for uh, three and a half years. And by the time he was getting close to making those final vows, he realized he had never stopped loving his high school sweetheart. Okay. Yeah, thank goodness for that, by the way. <laughs> or all this seven-footness wouldn't be here today, you know. <laughs> so he took the train, because that's how you travel in those days, and he took the train from St. Louis, stopped in Milwaukee. Uh, my mother was a senior in nursing school at, at Marquette High School, or Marquette College, Marquette University, and proposed, you know. And so apparently my mother didn't have any better options, so she's going to marry this guy who's going to be a priest. So. <laughs> but they, uh, so that's, yeah, I'm very fortunate to have been born in that family, and there's people here that, like Mary Van Dyke, that knew both of them really well. And it, uh, uh, just tremendous mom and dad. I didn't get the opportunity, though, to uh, have a father for long. He, he passed away. He was only 39 in 1969, hence the uh, baseball field being named after him. He was real active in the community. He was very, very active. He, was a, he sold insurance, um, but he had trouble closing. So we never had any money. But <laughs> if you want... But if you wanted to have a parish picnic that made a lot of money, he was your guy, you know, and he was very active in town and just a super guy. And he was, I went with him everywhere. I followed him around. He was a referee. He played basketball. He actually uh, was a pretty good basketball player. And, and in those days, he was on a little semi-pro team called the O'Connell Falls Northern Lights. And they actually would play the Globetrotters every year. And if, for those of you that were at uh, Black, uh, at Soul Food Dinner a couple weeks ago, and Chuck Holton, who's class of 1952 from St. Norbert and our first African-American uh, graduate, Chuck played with that Globetrotter team, and he and my dad became friends. And so, but anyway, my, my father passed away in, in 69, and um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss him. You know, he, uh, as a tall, skinny kid, you know, I, I would hide behind him. I was really shy, and he was everything to me, and so... Uh, but he left a great legacy and a lot of great stories to tell. 
Nope. So here's the, here's the first class picture of St. Norbert. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about my St. Norbert story. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if everybody, you've never seen this photo before, but that's Father Pennings in the background. Uh, this picture would have been taken probably in September or early, or excuse me, October of uh, 1898. This was the first class. Um, and so that's Father Pennings. Uh, you know, he, he wasn't an abbot until either the tw mid-20s. Uh, and also in the back row is Rutherford McDonald. Rutherford McDonald. Rutherford McDonald, he was the first uh, lay teacher here. You know, I think he only taught a year or two. Assuming uh, Pennings was teaching, you know, the story has it that he started teaching Latin to Van Dyke, uh, Ignatius Francis Van Dyke, who we consider, he was the first one. We know he was here first. And then he was joined two weeks later by Anthony Vissers. Now, both of these guys probably walked right out of St. Joseph's grade school in, uh, here in the neighborhood and, it, and attended uh, and started hearing Latin lessons from, from Father Pennings. And uh, two other boys joined him within a couple of weeks, uh, including, I think the third one was uh, uh, Charles Savageau. And the, the story on that one, if you're not aware, is uh, Van Dyke and Vissers actually pulled him through a window. There was, there was a bunch of schoolyard kids, boys, that wanted to join these two guys. And uh, so, you know, Savageau was probably the bigger, stronger of that group, and they pull him through the window into the, what would have been at the time probably old St. Joseph's grade school. And, and then a fourth one named, uh, I'm going to get this name right here, Billy, Billy Marchant, who, although that's a de pure name, Billy Marchant actually came from Southern Door County, so he probably knew the Norbertines from when Pennings and his, and his brothers were teaching in that area. So those were the first four students that started St. Norbert College. Um, Father Van Dyke is, um, of course, considered the first athletic director here. The gymnasium inside campus center is Van Dyke Gymnasium. Um, the alumni house here on campus is named after him. So he, he, he not only was our first student and our first alum, he was also a very active Norbertine here on campus. So I came to St. Norbert um, via Abbott Pennings High School. I went to St. Joseph's Grade School myself here on campus for a short period of time, and then the camp, uh, St. Norbert, or St. Joseph's Great School moved out to what is now Our Lady of Lourdes. And so I finished up out there, but it was called St. Joseph's, always a Norbertine parish. Then I went to Abbott Pennings High School and was taught by Norbertines. One in particular, our principal, Father uh, George Fellman, uh, otherwise known as Jackson. Uh, Father Fellman saved my life because on, on my father's deathbed, um, he asked Jackson to keep an eye on me. And thank goodness he did, because I wasn't the best of students. I was a rebel without a cause. <laughs> and uh, I found myself in trouble a lot. And Father Feldman stood by me and helped me through a really tough time at Pennings. I didn't go to St. Norbert uh, my freshman year. I took a basketball scholarship down at a place called Florida Technological University. It's now called uh, Central Florida University. They took the technological out after they admitted me. <laughs> And they, uh, but I wasn't happy there. This was my home here at, at, uh, in West of Pier. It's certainly this campus is where I grew up. So I, I came back. And I was a member of the class of 77. I say that, and, and I can honestly say that. I was a member of the class of 77. Truth be told, I, I didn't exactly graduate from here, but I was only here for two terms, Nixons and Carters. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> but in, in reality, I guess it would be three terms. You could throw Ford in there as well. But <laughs> I can remember that because my grandmother was, we, you know, she, I lived with my grandmother over on Stewart Street when my college days here. And I, I remember the impeachment trial going on because my grandmother couldn't hear. She, well, she could. It was selective hearing. But she was pretty deaf. And when, um, when the, the impeachment thing was going, you could hear it you know, a block away, coming out of her living room. And she was cheering, uh, truly a Democrat, you know. So. <laughs> but I, as a student here, I managed to get uh, my picture on the basketball guide, um, the 75, 76 uh, basketball guide. So we had a really nice team that year. We actually knocked off Loyola University down in Chicago. They were only 12 years removed from winning a national championship. Uh, there was a big Division I program at the time, and Little St. Norbert College went up down there and beat them. And 
Here's a picture of my grandmother. And a couple, I got to tell some quick stories here be before I run out of time. But my uh, Cassie Danan, Catherine Kelly. Uh, Catherine Kelly Danan, known as Cassie, was a real piece of work. My, my Uncle Maz is up there, he knows her well. Um, she, uh, she was something. And, uh, and a real part of the St. Norbert community at the time. But I, it's there because I, I thought, what do I tell about St. Norbert? I thought, well, I thought I'd talk about my dating at the college. Now, I'm, I'm very shy, and uh, for certainly then. Uh, maybe not so much now, but I, I still am. And, uh, you know, so I'm this tall, awkward college kid that is afraid to talk to girls, um, and certainly I'm not going to ask any of them out. And so I finally, uh, my grandmother played a role in, in, in two, two, two date stories that I'll tell you about. I think those are the only date stories, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> First, first one involved, uh, there's this cute cheerleader. I'll just use a first name here to protect her. Her name was Jane Appleton Xavier. And um, I, she, I don't know, I, I, I wanted to ask her, but I didn't have the courage. On a basketball court, I always had courage, but I didn't have it out, outside, the, off the court. So during a game, um, the old Van Dyke gym was, wasn't the biggest place, and so I'm, you know, kid, we're playing Loris College, and kid from Laura shooting a free throw, so I got inside position, just like you guys would do, right, Mr. Hofager? <laughs> and uh, cheerleaders are just right here on my left, underneath the bucket. And there's Jane, and she's looking at me. And I, so I did it. I, <laughs> before the kid shot the free throw, I asked her if she wanted to go out. <laughs> yeah? And be, uh, Kid shot the free throw, missed. I had to go get the rebound before she could answer. <laughs> so I go down the court. There's a couple of trips up and down the court, and then the next day I know there's a dead ball, and play stops a little bit, and I happen to be near I turn and I hear a yes. <laughs> I turn around and think, wow. You know, so uh, I quickly, you know, I knew, I said, I knew she, you know, was, uh, she lived at Sensenbrenner because that's what a good stalker would know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I get to, at the time I, I had this conversion van, you know, I won't, right? That's every father wants to see that pull up in their driveway, right? <laughs> Carpeted in the back and, right, no windows, right? So, but my grandmother went to all the games, okay? And, and so even though she, we only lived a block away from the park, she, was, she wasn't walking real well at that, that point. And, I had mounted an old uh, recliner that s swiveled and stuff, and, uh, and I screwed it into the back of the conversion van, and then so I could open the side doors, and, there, and I had a little step. It was easier to get her into the vehicle that way than to try to get her into the front seat. So that's where she always rode. She loved it back there <laughs> in that seat. So she's waiting in Mel Nix, the athletic director's office, until I'm done showering. This was a ritual after every game, and then I would take her home. And so. Uh, we, we get in the car, and she announces, I want to go get a sandwich. And I said, well, Grandma, I've, I, I've got a date. And she goes, that's OK. She can come, too. <laughs> so, so then we didn't go home. We drove over to Sensenbrenner, and I, I, I go to the door, and there's Jane's waiting. And I'm bringing Jane, and I, and I said, well, there's something i got to tell you. And we get to the car, and, and there's my you know, toothless, hard of hearing <laughs> old grandmother <laughs> is, is in the back of the car. So it, it ended up working out well. You know, we, we did a date more to the liking of my grandmother where we went out and had a sandwich and a piece of pie. <laughs> and the two of them hit it off. And it was really nice. Now, matter of fact, the second date, uh, they went out. I didn't. <laughs> so, but so be it. Now, the, the next one. Um, I'm going to have to go quickly here. The, the, the next date um, was, um, I was actually technically out of St. Norbert at the time, but it, my grandmother passed away. I was living in Eau Claire, um, working at Menards. In, uh, in 78, my grandmother passed. So I came home for the funeral, and, after, and a couple of high school buddies were there. And so uh, after the uh, wake, we, uh, we went to the old Abbey Bar, 
having a beer and, and some, you know, certainly there were students in there. And one of my buddies knew um, this young woman, you know, she, she was probably either a sophomore or junior at the college. And we got to talking and, there, you know, I thought, oh, there's something here and maybe, you know, this, this will work. But, uh, Lord, I've, I've got to get back to Eau Claire tomorrow. So she's getting ready, you know, to get back to campus. You know, it wasn't late, 9, 10 o'clock, and certainly to do some studying. And, she, and uh, so I just said, can I take you to lunch tomorrow? And she, she said, well, that'd be great. So the, the next day, I, you know, it's about 11 o'clock, I pull up in front of Madeline Lorraine, um, and when I get you know, go escort her to the car, open the door, and so we get in the car, and so well, there's something we got to do before we go to lunch. Well, it was my grandmother's funeral. <laughs> so, and now this just isn't attending it. We drive to Ryan Funeral Home. All of a sudden, she's a little nervous. We go in, we're there for the closing of the casket. Then we get into a black car and follow the hearse to St. Joseph's Church. And you, know, you can imagine my family thought I was literally out, because everybody's going, like Maz can tell these stories, like, who's that with Todd? He's a, you know, and they think, he didn't bring a date to his grandmother's <laughs> funeral. So, um, but I did. Um, <laughs> And we eventually had we eventually had lunch, uh, but again it was the funeral lunch that you know, <laughs> again um, there w there was no second date. <laughs> so, I, you know what I'm going to end up having to uh, pass on a, a few s stories here. So I'm, I'm going to pass on this radio story, but uh, some of you know about it well, here at St. Norbert. It also included, if, without the radio that came to St. Norbert by a, a student named Cletus Collin in 1925, a little geeky little engineer that was a good electrician, showed up here, and we ended up, St. Norbert ended up with two radio stations and a television station, which cr generated a lot of revenue for the college, and it's, it's, it's a great little story. But I want to get into 52 here quickly. 52, the fall of 52 is when... Um, women first came to St. Norbert College as full-time students. So, and this was our first homecoming queen, or first student that was a homecoming queen, Rose, Rosalie Olenicek. And if you know Pat Olenicek over in the um, Crescent, this is his aunt. So it's great. And then, not to be outdone, but I really like how Maureen Hogan was a treasurer of her freshman class that first year. Now, there was only 24 here, there, there's one is with us right now, Kathy Jacobs, Kathy Schmitz, otherwise known as Schmitzy back then. I would have asked you out, Schmitzy. <laughs> yep, yep. So, Maureen Hogan was a, so the, pretty good with only 24. Now, these women, the college wasn't uh, prepared for women, you know, because they really didn't take it seriously enough, I don't believe. They, you know, they, it certainly wasn't a unanimous decision amongst the Norbert teens to allow women to become full-time students here, and it's certainly not all the men appreciated having them there. So it was a little awkward and uncomfortable, and if I recall some of the stories I remember hearing, they, were, um, they, were, uh, they weren't really prepared to have a bathroom for them. Now, they're in Boyle Hall, so I think on the first day they end up having to board up some of the urinals <laughs> so that these women could, could you know, use one of the rooms and in certain times, so all the classes, most of them were held in Boyle Hall at the time, well they had nowhere else to go but that bathroom. And the story was that these women by October had paint, smoked the walls blue, <laughs> smoking cigarettes in that bathroom. <laughs> but there, there's a picture of Schmitzi, one of our cheerleaders, and again with Rosie Olenicek, Maureen Hogan, the, the treasurer of the uh, freshman class, and then again, Kathy Schmitz, wonderful people. Uh, the union, I'm, I'm going to go by that one. I just want to talk about Dennis Burke here for a second. Father Burke was the second president uh, at St. Norbert College, and I like what you can't read here, but one of his, he was a tall man, and one of his instructors called him seven feet of Ireland. And I always liked that. I was once called by a high school classmate, seven foot of fun. Those <laughs> days are long gone, but, uh, they, <laughs> but there's Father Burke now. In, a, in an iconic photo with President Kennedy. Now, 
President Kennedy wasn't the only, uh, excuse, excuse me, Senator Kennedy, this occurred in 1960, he wasn't the only uh, presidential hopeful that appeared on campus. In 1963-64, in, in I think, or it's somewhere in there, uh, Governor George Wallace from Alabama, just uh, less than a year removed for organizing a stand-in in front of the University of Alabama, not allowing two black students to register for college there. Um, was then running for president and was invited to St. Norbert to speak. You think the president's office got phone calls on that one, ladies? <laughs> huh? But anyway, so, you know, it, we have a long history of being a good college. I was told there's all, quite a, several alums that were at that speech that are in the room right now. So if you wanted to ask them what, what occurred, you could certainly do that uh, afterwards. So we move on. This is the a football picture from the class of 65. And most, uh, there's uh, several of you in the room here that will, uh, will be turning 50 this year when we induct the class of 1965 in the Golden Knight Society. But I just love that photo. That's out at old Minahan Stadium with the, with the Abbey in the background. Not to be outdone, our co-eds also played a little game. This was before homecoming. So, uh, and there's, and the, the parades were spectacular in their day. Before that, I was, I was talking earlier with somebody, that looks like if this was a, uh, that old movie, Animal House, suddenly John Belushi's gonna come balling out of that chair with, <laughs> but, th I mean, that's, that's, those are some floats. And I love this picture from 65. That's, that's, that's not choreographed. I mean, that happened in a game. And it just turned out, there's three great guys in that picture. Left to right, you got Dave Minton, who's uh, now our uh, women's golf coach. And in the middle is uh, Dr. Rankin, who is a longtime uh, dean here, um, dean of men. And then on the end is John Patterson, who uh, was a teacher, longtime teacher and coach at, over in the East of Pier District. Great guys. There's Father Burke again with John Glenn. You asked what John Glenn was the commencement speaker 50 years ago this spring. So, you know, we've, we've had some famous people here on campus. So. And then just to verify that, there he is at the podium. So I'm going to finish up here, because I only have a, a minute or so. This is my mother. Now, I have a father that I adored, but I have a mother who I loved and who was a saint. Um, as I mentioned, Joan Jansen, she went to Marquette, graduate, I think that would have been 51, 52. Um, she nursed three men. My father, as I said, died in 1968, um, and he died saying goodbye to her. She was, he was at home, she was holding his hand. Um, he had not talked for a couple of days, and right before his final breath, he told my mother, uh, they're here, the, the angels are coming to get me, and it's time to go, and he told her how much he loved her. And then, years later, the same thing occurred with my stepfather, where again, he, and my wife and I were present for that one, where he didn't say anything for a couple of days. I remember we had a sponge just putting water on his lips, and that last minute, his head came off the pillow and looked at her and said how much he loved her and that his parents were here to get him, and he left. And then she did the same thing for her dad, her, um, her old buck when he passed. So she's a saint and uh, a good person. I mean, and I owe so much, I owe, I owe her for a lot of things, in, including uh, my wife. Now, as I talked about being shy and not dating, my wife's an alum, and I think a lot of you know that. Class of 82, I'm five years older, so when, when, uh, when I was leaving St. Norbert, she was like an eighth grader. And that, <laughs> that's, that's it's five years isn't big now, but back then that'd have been a little creepy. <laughs> so, uh, but she was a student here. I, I wasn't necessarily on campus. I was just this ne'er do well, you know, off campus. You know, I, I, uh, so I know she's not going to have anything to do with me. I would, you know, I, I knew who she was, and I had this mad crush on her. But I thought, I, you know, she needs a country club lifestyle that I can't accommodate her with. So, I, I didn't bother her at all. But I, she around town, so. I know time passes, and I, my, it was when my stepfather had a stroke, and my grandfather was sick, so my mother had a 
They were living up in Eagle River, Wisconsin, so she had to move back down here, you know, find an apartment to live in. I was the only one of our four sons living in town, so she asked me, you know, and, and I was in a job that I, I knew wasn't my career, and I, I wanted to finish college, and she said, well, I could use some help taking care of my dad and, and your stepfather, and, you know, so I, I made the decision of going back to college, and then moved into this apartment, uh, which was easy to take care of my stepfather and, you know, and help my mother. And so, uh, you know, I, six months later, my mother said to me, you, gotta, you need a life. You've got to go do something socially. You know, why don't you go down to Milwaukee and spend some time with your brother Patrick? So I thought, okay. So I, I drove down there, and he and I went out, and we heard from this guy who said, yeah, I know this party over on the east side. Uh, and we, we weren't far from the, the address, and so we just, you know, without knowing anybody, we just heard there, you know, th there was some women there. <laughs> so my brother, you know, and I had a little more courage now. <laughs> so we go over there, so we, we it's a three-story uh, uh, old brick uh, house apartment. Ring the doorbell, I hear this guy's voice on the other end. We say, we're here for the party. The buzzer rings, we push the door up, we go upstairs, we've got to ring another doorbell to get in the door. And I ring the doorbell and it opens, and there she was. The gal I had a crush on that I couldn't talk to, and, um, and she's sitting right there. And <laughs> I mean, it, it was like heaven. I couldn't believe it. You know, I, I got this, I mean, there, my opportunity, I mean, it was the single moment, in, most important moment in my life, because it changed who I am <laughs> to see her. And this is, now you gotta, you know, again, let me tell you the back story here. It's, you know, um, I mean within f four months I proposed. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna let her get away. <laughs> I said, so four, and, and, the re and well, the reason I did is she, I found out she was an only child and her dad had four tickets at Lambeau Field on the 40 yard line. <laughs> so I wasn't wasting time. And I can't believe she said yes, because remember, I'm a, 35-year-old college dropout, living with his parents. <laughs> you know, I've got a 1959 Rambler and a black and white TV in my dowry. So God bless her for marrying me. Well, I, I'm sorry. I, I want to say so many more things about our Golden Knights that were here. To, to make it up to you, Golden Knights, after we have a little coffee, I'm going to take my son and wife over to the cafeteria for lunch. You're more than welcome to join me. It's on me. Oh, it's always a fun time to go to the cafeteria. So, Julie, thank you so much. I'm sorry I, if I've gone a little behind. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh. yeah. you you I didn't tell them about you, Kevin. mentioned there is hospitality outside this room and any people who have um, time to linger for some we invite you to do so and, and um, will you join me in thanking not only Todd but also the Golden Knights the wonderful alumni who have joined us to be present today thank you all